Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, we're going to show you how to bleed the brake system. And that is replacing all the fluid in the entire brake system from the reservoir back to the calipers. You also want to get all of the trapped air out of the system because air in the system can cause the brakes not to be as efficient because air compresses while fluid does not. This is really something you should probably do every two years or 30,000 miles, which means I got to do it sometimes twice in one year I put in excess of 40,000 miles on my car a year now the brake fluid is designed to keep your brake system functioning well of course it helps the parts of the brake system pressurize the calipers make those calipers squeeze the pads against the rotors give you stopping force when your brake fluid gets old it quits functioning in the system the way it's designed to do. It lubricates a little bit. It also absorbs water. When you have cold metal parts and they get hot from braking force, they what we call sweat. That sweat is absorbed in the brake fluid and then that brake fluid does two things. It loses its ability to protect the brake system, keep all those parts lubricated, stuff like that. It also lowers the boiling point of the fluid. Why does that matter? Well, if your braking system gets extremely hot and the heat of the braking system, calipers, pads, rotors, exceeds the fluid's ability to prevent boiling, the fluid will boil. Usually does that when it's contaminated with moisture that it has captured over time. When the braking system fluid boils it starts introducing air into the calipers when you have air in the system you can lose your braking ability ask me how I know happened to me one time I got a video linked in the comments below so it's important to replace the old fluid with new fluid as time goes on the fluid absorbs moisture that moisture lowers the boiling point and sooner or later your boiling point is brought down so low that you can uh, have brake boil in normal braking situations now me I had mine boil in extreme braking situations trying to avoid an accident getting stuck in traffic all of a sudden going from high speed to low speed things like that coming down a long hill braking could also raise the temperature of your braking parts and introduce you to a situation where your brake fluid can boil. So my advice is that you one check your owner's manual see how often they recommend you replace that fluid Two, verify in your owner's manual what type of fluid you should be using. Auto parts stores recommend the wrong brake fluid to people all the time. My car uses DOT4 a lot of the Volvos in the 90s uses DOT4, but these auto parts stores always sell people DOT3, which has a lower boiling point. When your brake system gets hot, you don't want a lower boiling point to start off. Example, I believe DOT3 begins to boil at about 340 degrees, whereas DOT4 begins to boil at around 430 degrees. So, you don't want to use dot three in a system that is expected to use dot four. Also, you don't want to use the wrong type of brake fluid. So check your owner's manual, use the right type of fluid. Let's get started. Most car manufacturers design their vehicles to use approximately 32 fluid ounces of fluid in the entire system which is about 950 milliliters. If you have one bottle, this one bottle should flush the whole system. So you rarely need more than one bottle. 
also you need to know as soon as you open this bottle this bottle or this fluid in the bottle will begin to absorb moisture moisture from the atmosphere moisture from damp areas whatever so once you open brake fluid it begins to age in your car system it's designed to last about two years sitting on the shelf it may be bad in two years it may be bad in four unless you have a tester you don't know somebody has some brake fluid sitting on their shelf in their garage I tested it the fluid was bad sitting on the shelf in two and a half years so you don't want to have fluid sitting around they actually make a tester that you can test the brake fluid to see if it's good what you see here is a brake fluid tester basically what it does is measure the water content in the fluid brand new fluid should have zero percent water content if you have one or two percent water content in your fluid that's considered okay when you get an excess of two percent water content in your brake fluid that's considered bad needing to be changed so I push the button it's a green light I dip it in the brake fluid as you can see every light lit up it's in excess of four percent water content that's bad for the components in your braking system and it could allow things like your calipers and master cylinder and stuff like that to begin to rust because there's water content in the fluid in your system so what you want to do is try to keep this water content below 2% by changing the fluid as recommended in your owner's manual. Now a lot of people just eyeball the brake fluid. When it starts getting brownish in color, like you see in that reservoir, sometimes you can see it in the side of the reservoir, you know that brake fluid is old. You don't want to wait until it gets that old. Here is some fresh, here is some fresh brake fluid inside this cap. I turn my tester on. I dip it in there it has zero water content you know so you want less than 2% water content that more water content you have in your brake fluid the quicker that brake fluid can boil again if your brake fluid boils while you're braking and the brakes are hot you introduce air into the system you lose your ability to brake so let's get started you want to protect your brake fluid system from any dirt contamination getting in there first thing you want to do is clean off the reservoir top make sure that all the dirt and debris from around it you can spray it down with brake parts cleaner you don't want any dirt falling in there when you open up the reservoir you take the lid out of the reservoir protect your painted and other surfaces from brake fluid brake fluid is corrosive and it eats through things like pain stuff like that so you don't want to get this brake fluid on anything if you don't have to take the lid out put a rag under it sit it in the rag now I had already cleaned this one off with brake parts cleaner because it was gummed up that's a float sensor in there you don't want that gummed up you want that to be able to go up and down very easy that way if your fluid starts getting low you get a warning light inside the car once you have the brake reservoir cap off you can begin to squeegee out some of the fluid now most vehicles brake fluid reservoir has a screen in there to protect dirt and stuff from getting into the system that's kind of got a tight fit you can pull that up and out of there get you some pliers or something remove that so that it is not in the way of you siphoning out all the fluid that you want to get out make sure that's cleaned off and not damaged that's protecting dirt from getting in your braking system next I take a turkey baster pay a buck or two for at a grocery store I get a container and I begin to squeegee out the fluid from inside the reservoir I suck it up into the turkey baster I squirt it into the container so I want to get all of the fluid possible out of that reservoir because when I introduce fresh clean fluid in there I really don't want it mixing with the old fluid that's in there so once I get all of that sucked out of there 
I'm going to go under the car, open up one of the brake caliper bleeding screws, start to allow fluid to come out of that brake caliper. Then I'm going to fill this reservoir up with fresh fluid. Once I get that reservoir filled up with fresh fluid, I know it's flowing down towards that open caliper. I'm also going to fill this up with the rest of the bottle from the fresh bottle that I purchased. Pressurize this so that it's pressurizing the brake system, pushing the fluid out. Now, on most vehicles, the bleeding order of the calipers is the furthest caliper from this brake reservoir first, then the next closest, then the next closest, then the closest. So, on my vehicle, I'm going to go passenger rear, then I'm going to go driver's rear, then I'm going to go passenger side, then I'm going to go driver's front. Because those brake calipers are the furthest to the closest away from my reservoir. Let me go ahead and suck all the fluid out of this and then attach my draining system to the caliper furthest away from this brake fluid reservoir. I got all the fluid out of there that I possibly could. I'm going to cover that up with a rag so nothing drips in there. Now I'm going to go connect my rear brake caliper to the container I'm going to drain the fluid in. You could take the wheel off if you want. I just jacked the car up, put them on jack stands, and I can access this bleed screw from the caliper without taking the wheel off. So I take the dust cap off of it. I'm going to put a socket on there to break that loose. These are often hard to get off, so you may want to spray PB Blaster on it. I've even seen people go so far as to add a little heat to them. But you want to break that screw loose. Then you want to snug it down a little bit, put the bleeding hose on there that you're going to drain the fluid into. Then you want to put the tool on there and open that up so that fluid begins to drain out of the caliper. The drain bottles that I have that will catch the fluid has a little vent hose hole in the cap. It has a tube that goes up to the bleed screw. It has hooks that can hang them from the springs or suspension parts and cables to support them. Whatever you want to do, you want to make sure that the bottles don't fall over. Mine even has a magnet on there. It can be magnetized to a suspension part to hold on. But since I'm close to the ground, I'm going to set the bottle on the ground my bleed screws were nine millimeter i broke broke those loose you normally find your bleeder screws are going to be between nine and eleven millimeters so i got the screw broke loose i should be getting fluid out of them i could press the brake to accelerate that however i have a power bleeder that power bleeder will open up the check valve and push fluid past that so I have that open sometimes the thread on these calipers will leak a little fluid so I'm gonna put a rag under it so it don't get down on the wheel and leak on the ground that stuff I said is it's harsh so you don't want it leaking all over things so I'm gonna put a rag under there put some fluid in the reservoir hook up my power bleeder and begin to bleed this caliper with my power bleeder you can see just maybe a little bit of fluid is starting to come out of there. It's hard to tell. Yep. So let me put this back on here. Catch this fluid coming out. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up the power bleeder. Come back here and monitor it because we'll see it filling up with dirty fluid. Once the fluid starts looking clean, I'm going to stop it. Capture just a little bit of it. Test it with my brake fluid tester to make sure it's clean fluid and then we'll close this off and move to the next one on the other side of the car I will say this I'm probably going to use half of the bottle just getting fluid back to here clean and then the other half of the bottle will service the other three calipers so you're pushing fluid into the caliper from the power bleeder and pushing the bad fluid out and you're just replacing all the bad fluid with good. Back up to the front of the car. I'm going to fill up this reservoir with fresh fluid. And then I'm going to hook up the power bleeder to begin to push the fresh fluid 
through the lines and through the calipers. You could use a funnel if you want. I'm pretty good at pouring stuff since I do it all the time. Now I'm going to pour almost all of the rest of this fluid into my power bleeder. I'm going to save just a little bit for maybe topping off the reservoir. The fluid I just poured in there mixed in with the dirty fluid that was in there. But let's see what the tester says. See, the tester says I'm at 1% where I was uh, totally clear. Now that you got the fluid in here, you want to go ahead and screw the cap onto your fluid reservoir, making sure you have the right cap adapter. Screw that thing on there and then pressurize your power bleeder. Pressurize the power bleeder by pumping this up and down and then locking it in place. When you're using a power bleeder, you don't want to mix different types of fluids. So clean it out if you're switching from one to another. That way you don't contaminate the brake system with some fluid that shouldn't be in the car. Uh, watch your hoses. As you can see, I got one leaking here. Put a rag under that. Uh, try not to put too much pressure on it. I normally put it up to one bar or 15 PSI. That's why this is leaking because I don't have anything open at this time. And I still got a little pressure on it. So be careful of that. Now I'm going to go under the car and check the calipers. Make sure that they get fresh fluid out of them. Then I'm going to move to the next one. Then I'm going to move to the next one. I'm done with the back. I'm moving up to the front. So I'm going to come and relieve pressure off of the system so that it's not leaving it pressurized while I reposition my drains. When the fluid starts looking clear, I close the bleeder screw off. Then I remove the hose. I capture a little bit of it in a cap and then I test it to see if it's clear. If it's clear, 0% on my tester. I cap it off. If it's not clear, I bleed a little bit more out. See, that's starting to clear up right now compared to down here in the bottom. And just move from one to the next. Tested the fluid out of this one. It's still 3%. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a little more fluid out of this one. If I pull contaminated fluid out of the caliper, I pour it in the drip pan. If I pull clean fluid out of the caliper, I pour it back in the bottle. You want to keep an eye on your reservoir and your power bleeder that you're still pushing fluid through there. It had gone empty. You keep between, I normally do between 10 and 15 PSI on it. Keep a positive flow. And if you hear this bottle going empty, you want to shut it down. You don't want to empty out your reservoir. So I'm on my last caliper. Everything is going well. All of them opened up and closed for me. So this fluid is starting to look clear already. I'm going to go ahead and close this off and test the fluid. And I may be done. Just need to top off the reservoir. All four calipers are bled. Now I want to make sure the reservoir is topped off. So first thing I'm going to do is relieve pressure off of this. So I'm going to undo the cap to get the pressure off the bottle. Cap's not on that tight. You can see. Cap's loose. Now I'm going to unscrew the cap from the reservoir here. Put a rag under there to catch anything that may be overflowed on there. If it's too much fluid in there. I'm going to catch what it will spill out. I think the cap has a check valve here. Yeah, see. It's got a little valve there to stop you from spilling stuff on it. And now I need to top off the reservoir. Put it at the right level. And I'll be all done. Put the cap on it. Put the screen in it. Then put the cap on it. And I'll be all done. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post.
You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.